Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We are here for an update on the NSX and uh, as you can see here, it is essentially the same. It's been untouched since it left Atlanta uh, for a couple of reasons, primarily because of a couple of commitments that we had. D-Sport shot the car and then we had Fuel Fest with uh, Yokohama at their booth last weekend. So we wanted to leave the car together for that. Uh, Yokohama has been an amazing partner, so wanted to have the car available to them. So other than side splitters, which you can kind of see right there, these new guys right here, uh, 3D side splitters, which have a cool little channel, much like our end plates, and uh, help widen the car a little bit and seal the side. So these are the prototype pieces. We have them on a couple of cars. You may have seen them on Ill Will's ISF if you follow that build, which is a pretty amazing car. But other than that, it is pretty much the same. Uh, that doesn't mean that we haven't had things going on in the background. We have some really cool parts that uh, we recently got. And let's start with a pretty interesting transmission that we have just over there. All right, so the first thing is our new transmission that we're gonna be running. We are using a set of six-speed sequential transmission that has been modified to work with the K-Series engine. This is a bell housing that's designed to basically make this bolt right up. And this thing is pretty unique because it is 3D printed. You know, you can't typically pick up a transmission with one hand, and that's including an aluminum bell housing that's a uh, piece of billet. So this thing is super cool and lightweight and here so that that way we can mock it up and test fit it with an engine before we get the real thing. So very few companies do this. Uh, we've worked with a couple of different sequential manufacturers on various projects and this is pretty awesome. So we didn't even ask them for this. They literally were like, okay, you ordered the transmission. Let's send this to you. Really, really cool. So it is essentially a perfect match for the actual transmission that we'll be using. Everything's in the same place. As you can see, all of the fittings are where they need to be. Um, actual fittings too, which is cool. So they put the sensors uh, where they're going to go. They even put the uh, axle housing uh, inside the transmission. And if you look here, you can see the level of detail. There's actual, I don't know if you can see it in there. It looks like it's getting clear. You can see splines. Uh, for the differential. So the this is a real hydraulic throttle bearing, probably the one that we'll end up using, AP unit, really nice. And this thing is a super cool transmission. I'm probably more excited about this than almost anything else we're doing to the car. It uh, will be paddle actuated using a hydraulic shifter actuator. So a little bit different, most are air pneumatic. And this is a uh, state of zone design. This is their actuator. And then these are the lines that go to it and their hydraulic actuator actually just bolts to the side of the transmission. So everything is housed on it, which makes uh, everything very easy. The engine harness that we just got back from Rywire is going to just be plug and play to that. But really cool piece. Uh, I'll show you some of the cool details about it. Uh, first being the billet bell housing essentially just bolts right up, makes this plug and play. The differential is really trick on this one. So there are a couple of options you can do and we opted for kind of the coolest that they had, which was to start. Uh, if you look down here, you can kind of see it right there. Uh, what that is, is a preload adjuster. So if you loosen a lock nut and adjust that, you can basically change the preload of the differential without having to do anything. So you can literally jack the car up and get this done in the pits uh, and change the way that the car drives in a matter of seconds. Next, this housing, you'll notice it looks kind of funny, three ears there. And the reason for that is if you take the axle off and you loosen those three fasteners, this thing basically twists and the entire LSD pulls out and you can adjust the LSD at the track without having to remove the transmission or open up the bell housing uh, or open up the transmission case. Really, really cool there. So that was an option that they gave us and we opted for, which is really neat. So between sessions or between uh, days, you can change that. And then here we have these three ports and you just take off that little Allen and you can pull all of these out and inspect every gear and dog on the transmission. So after every event, when you come and do your post-event checks, it's uh, essentially drain the fluid, take an extra five minutes to inspect everything, and you know the health of the transmission, which is pretty amazing. Uh, they've also been really cool to work with in terms of gear ratios and what will work. We uh, 
we run out of gear at a lot of tracks and we wanted to make sure that we had enough gear if we needed it for tracks like Coda or Road Atlanta. So they worked with us and gave us essentially gear ratios that they thought would work best and also gear ratios that were still going to allow the transmission to smooth really, sh uh, or shift really smoothly, which is really cool. So uh, I've never had this level of involvement with anyone when building or buying anything. You can definitely tell that they're a full on motorsport company. It's all they do. They make some pretty incredible transmissions. So we're excited to have them as a partner on the build. They're helping us with this and making this really work. So that's really exciting. And uh, I guess that kind of leads us to the next part of what we have going on that's actually gonna be installed shortly, which is the wiring harness and ECU. So let's take a look at that. All right, so that brings us to the ECU and wiring harness. We recently got this new engine wiring harness from Rywire, which is quite nice. Uh, beautiful, per the usual Rywire stuff. Quick disconnect, which has been amazing with the amount of times we've had to pull uh, engines and transmissions out of this thing and servicing it. The, uh, the harness has everything we could possibly want in it. They did everything from the connector that goes to the hydraulic shifter, to drive-by wire, to the uh, EGT sensors, all sorts of different pressures and temperatures. So we've got essentially everything we could possibly want in here. They made this incredibly fast. They're always excellent to work with. Easily labeled, stuff like chassis, PDM, all that stuff. So this is really easy to work with. On a custom harness, they've also given us the pinouts for everything that we need. So if you wanna know where anything is, if you need to check it or service anything, everything's there. And also just if you have uh, open uh, inputs. So if you wanna add sensors or anything like that, you know where to do it. So very, very cool. Uh, Ryan, Durr, everyone over there is super awesome and really easy to work with. So huge thanks to those guys for getting this done so quickly. And naturally that brings us to our engine management, which is the Mtron ECU. I've had this thing for almost a year now. Uh, I'm almost embarrassed to admit. The reason being that we ran into so many little issues and fixing a bunch of other random things uh, between events that we never got a chance to put this in or make an engine harness, which is why eventually I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna make sure it happens, hit a prion and got the harness done. And now the ECU is going into the car this, uh, this weekend, most likely. So if you don't know much about Mtron, uh, they are an awesome engine management company. Essentially every fast time attack car in the world runs it. The uh, RP968, Tilton Evo, even recently the uh, Hammerhead uh, MCA car is on this, you know, even North America will in the PZ tuning, FK8, or uh, sorry, 9th Gen Civic, recently switched to an Mtron. So uh, it's been a pattern of fast cars are on Mtron for quite a few reasons. Uh, one of the cool features is we're going to have a lot of very advanced safeties. So I tend to just, if the car is giving me some warnings, sometimes I'll just be like, screw it, let's just go. And we'll have the ability to do that or turn them off if it's, let's say, uh, last session of the weekend, we have to get it done. But a lot of really cool things, like if coolant pressure gets too high, oil pressure drops too low, temperatures get too high, it's common that you're not really focusing on what's going on in front of you on the dash. Sometimes you're not looking at warnings or temperatures. So this will protect the engine in that case. And then also the, uh, traction control, which is gonna be a big one. So uh, they have an excellent traction control model in the ECU and in the software that we'll be using and working with them to develop and optimize. And then they also have some cool add-on features that they do that's kind of unique. Like they'll run a small drive-by-wire throttle body instead of a blow-off valve. And the reason that they do that is if you're running like a really large turbo and you wanna stay within the surge line, you kind of bleed uh, air off until you get the compressor uh, into the compressor map in an optimal area. So really neat there. We're not running that since we're probably gonna run smaller turbos than most of the uh, worldwide time attack cars, uh, at least for now. So we might add it later. And then there's also uh, a couple of different things that we've added like uh, the uh, pre throttle body map sensor so that, that way we can have an excellent torque model on there, stuff that they recommended. They basically told us what to do and what sensors they thought would be good to add and we added that. So uh, excited to get the ECU and the wiring harness on there. That'll be done this week. And uh, that brings us to our final thing that's coming on the car, which is going to be a new coil red triple pass radiator, save the best for last. A really, really cool product that they're basically, I think they just released, so let's take a look at that. All right, so save the best for last, uh, our Coilrad Triple Pass Radiator. If you've been following the channel at all, or myself for the build, you probably know that our car is the RS Future Coilrad NSX. 
And the reason for that is obviously Coirat is our biggest partner. They've been with us for a very long time, uh, over nine years throughout my time attack builds, my M3, the NSX, uh, various other cars. Basically, if I've ever needed a radiator, they've always been my go-to. And this is a very cool and exciting new product that they're coming out for, uh, coming out with for the NSX. And it's their new triple pass radiator. So a lot more cooling capacity than the off-the-shelf stuff that they normally have, which honestly works very, very well. And then on top of that, this is one of their very, very efficient cores that uh, is a new design. So originally, we ran an off-the-shelf Coyorad radiator, which is essentially a stock replacement that's a little bit thicker and has a very good core there. And realistically, we've had no issues with cooling. It's been amazing. We had a lot of issues in the beginning, and we thought that it could have been cooling capacity as in like, the how much fluids in the system, how thick the radiator is, what the uh, cooling capacity is of the radiator. And what we ended up finding out that it was actually a pressure issue. We were getting cavitation because the flow from the front uh, or from the back of the car to the front and then back was having so much pressure loss that it was cavitating. So the solution, which the guys at Coyer Red helped us figure out was an additional water pump in the front. So we actually run two water pumps. We run a mechanical water pump in the back and then we run an electric water pump in the front and that helps with the flow. So. Uh, once we learned that, we ran that radiator, had no issues, it was awesome, uh, and realistically, the only reason why we're changing is to kind of future-proof the car. So we could leave the radiator in there, I know it's going to be fine, which is most likely what would happen, but we decided to try this thing out because uh, with the triple pass, essentially what happens is the coolant follows a path like that, where it essentially goes through the radiator three times, and you get more cooling that way. A lot of race cars uh, have similar radiators like that. And the reason for the upgrade on our end is uh, if we want to add more power, uh, like let's say 750, 800 wheel horsepower, we can. So our turbo is pretty under stressed right now. We only make about, uh, or we're only running about 24 pounds of boost, which we know that the turbo is capable of at least another 10, 12 pounds to make a lot more power, but that means heat. So having the cooling capacity of this thing is going to be very beneficial. And then on top of that, we can also blank off a lot of the front end. So if we wanted to do one flyer and leave just this tiny uh, opening for the radiator, we can. So kind of like a NASCAR trick where in NASCAR, they'll actually completely block off all of the openings in the front to get as much downforce as possible uh, and as little drag as possible, run the car for one lap, shut it off and pull it in. So. Uh, we wouldn't go to that extent of having no opening, but with this, we can have a very small opening and run it that way. So that's the primary reasons why we wanted to switch to this thing. It's, uh, it's cool if we know it's gonna get the job done and it's gonna give us the freedom to work with some other stuff in the future aerodynamically and then also uh, in terms of performance. So I'm gonna get that in uh, this week. We're probably going to get the uh, harness and ECU in this weekend and from there we're going to get the car going for one final test event uh, the car is still in fully running form we're just going to get that sorted out and then get the car tuned with the new ecu make sure everything works i like to do things in steps so that that way if you run into issues you know that you can isolate what caused the issue and since we're going to have so many huge changes going on and the engine management is such an important aspect of uh, how a car runs and reliability uh, probably the most important i want to make sure that we can take a known quantity which is how the nsx is now put the ecu and the harness in there make sure that it starts it drives it runs and then from there get it tuned and start playing with things like traction control we'll worry a lot more about that in the future since our tire and suspension and everything's going to be so much different but get it running and go to button willow for one final lap to see if we can go a little bit faster than we have before we haven't been there with the new turbo setup we had a horrible gta finals last year and uh granted uh, I shouldn't complain too much. We managed to reset our record, but we only beat it by a few tenths and we only ran one full session, which was the last uh, last session of Sunday because of a failed battery, which created all sorts of weird issues that we were chasing that weren't the battery um, or weren't the problem. And then the battery ended up being the problem. We fixed it for the last session of the day, went out and had a decent setup or a decent session, but we didn't really do what we wanted to do. So we're gonna go out there with this new setup car will still be completely in street class trim and try to see if we can go a little faster 
And if we do, awesome. And if we don't, uh, no problem. We're just gonna tear it apart and try to go faster and unlimited anyway. So uh, thank you guys for watching and following along. I'll try to keep as many updates as I can going as long as I'm in town and not too crazy busy. And then get you a shop update soon because uh, 32 is uh, in the next stage. We have a cool M3 that we're doing some stuff on and the GT3 is almost ready to hit the track. So thanks for watching and see you guys next time.